Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Play. Today we're going to be taking a look at the latest offering from Forge World, um, the subsidiary of uh, Games Workshop that takes care of all of the sort of specialist style games, neat sort of like skirmish games, and other smaller scale stuff like Blood Bowl, Necromunda, um, and of course now Lord of the Rings as well, so the Hobbit strategy battle game. Um, and today we're looking at something near and dear to my heart, Adeptus Titanicus, the Horus Heresy. Now, if you don't know of my fondness for this game, uh, you can go back uh, in the video description below and check out my Let's Play for the 1988 edition of this game. It's a 30-year-old game, one of the first box games that Games Workshop ever produced, and is the Titan Combat giant robot smash game um, that is one of the games that brought me into the Games Workshop hobby. So. Um, I've gone through and done an overview of that classic original game, and today I'm bringing you the newest edition, 30 years later, um, in all of its giant robot glory. <laughs> so I'm pretty excited about this. Um, this is a, uh, a small skirmish scale, so you're probably playing with between, oh, I'd say three and six models, maybe, in the average size game, um, which has been redesigned to follow the sort of new Games Workshop motto of open narrative and matched play. Um, you can play everything from classic sort of like storyline missions from the Horus Heresy and you know, all the current Horus Heresy models, like the Battle of Kalth, uh, um, other sort of like great, great crusade battles. Uh, or you can play match play games that are designed for tournaments where you buy stratagems um, and try and duel it out with your opponent. There's a uh, sort of mash between the original rules and some of the later rules, such as Titan Legions, where you'll manage your reactor's power, um, try and push it to the limit, maybe have the machine spirit awaken and punch you a little bit or do something quite not quite in your control. Uh, you'll track damage from things like destroyed weapons, uh, damaged legs or crippled systems, and even your princeps and moderati can become injured. Your servers will scuttle around and try and fix your robots, and generally you go until one side has destroyed the other, um, or other sort of like fulfilled um, objectives have been done. There is lots of design space in here for more stuff later on. Uh, included in the advanced rules are rules for Imperial Knights, which operate very differently from the Titans themselves, um, having a very different way of absorbing damage and uh, activating. Uh, and of course for squadrons of uh, knights as well, or sorry, of titans as well, things like the Warhound Titans which fight in packs get additional advantages uh, and can operate sort of in loose formations as opposed to activating one at a time. Um, so let's take a look at the box set for this game. This is the Devastatangus Horus Heresy, as well as the uh, the one and only um, uh, Imperial Warlord Titan, the, what's, it, what's this class called now? The Magnificus class uh, of Titan, uh, which, I have, which I have one, I have one of the new kits, and I'll go through that with you as well. So here it is, Adeptus Titanicus, the rule set uh, for the Horus Heresy. And of course over here, the um, new box for the Warlord Battle Titan. So I'm gonna go through the box set for the star set first. What do you get? You get six command cards for Titans, two Reavers, two Warlords, and two, um, uh, what's it called, Warhounds. So basically if you split this, each player could have a maniple of cards basically for tracking stuff. You get scads and scads of tracking markers. So little guys here for tracking void shields. All these for tracking in-game effects. Piles of weapon arms. Um, so everything from the Bellicosa Volcano Cannon and Apocalypse Missile Launchers that are on uh, Top Dog over here. Um, to other things such as, uh, well you get two sets of those actually, in case you have two box set guys. Uh, the Reavers have access to things like Paired Gatling Laser Blasts, Turbo Laser Destructor. All the classic weapons you remember from old school uh, Titanicus are here as cards. And when you play the game, um, the cards actually have all of the info on them you need, including your scale, which in this game is basically power level from 40k. So you can play, when you play open play, you play by scale, you pick a scale point limit or a scale limit, and you add up the scale of the titans to, to match play, or you play match play itself, which you have the base point cost of a warlord titan, which is 385, plus your weapon costs. So for instance, top dog here has uh, two bellicosa volcano cannons and an apocalypse missile launcher. So he costs 110, 125, um, 510 overall when you add in all of his arms and stuff. And the slots here basically are given to fill these things in. Now you don't have to buy them a care pace when you don't want, you can leave it off as well. But you do have to fill each arm slot when you buy guns. You also have two cards for your Questor support banner for your knights, and those are also um, available in the Grand Master Edition of the game and at launch. Uh, and they have a very different card, but again, all of their values are in the back here. So when you buy a support banner of knights, they cost a total of, where is it? I believe it's 120, yeah, 120 at start, and then you have to buy them all weapons. They have to take two of these, and they can take one additional one. And the box set gives you a bunch of different options for how they're armed. Um, and so our banners are roughly 200 points when you see us playing the actual Let's Play. And they only track structure, and as their structure goes to zero, they start to take casualties and stuff. Other plastics that come in the box, of course you get dice, so you get uh, 10 six-sided dice. 
you get three order dice per side, so six order dice total, and two D10s, because two D10s are used for a lot of testing. So for instance, your command abilities will all test on D10s. You get a classic GW marker set in, I guess we'd call this Azure Blue. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you get some numeric tokens that are actually just used for numbering your titans if you need to know who's, who's who. So you could write one and two on the base, or five, and they go through ten. So you could use these little guys to number who your titans are during the course of the game. Then you get your order dice, of course, um, which I said you get six, and they're placed here when you issue an order during the strategy phase to your titans. You get three different types of 45 degree turning gauge, which you lay in front of the titan. It's also used for determining arcs for fire, so your 45 degree fire arcs. Um, as well as your corridor for your carapace weapons. So carapace weapons don't shoot in a 45 degree arc, they're locked forward. So they've, they've used the, the solid lines basically on the edge. Uh, and they're all sized for different bases. Now in this game, base size does matter, um, but it also doesn't. <laughs> Uh, you could rebase your old stuff on current base sizes, or you could just use the gauges that you'd measure everything from. So you could just have guys on proxies and use these to basically determine what the line of fires and stuff are. So it's you could easily play with old titans and just sort of proxy their bases underneath them, or put them on templates when you need to measure things, and then just use what comes in this box set to, to do your measurements and stuff. Because there are no titans in this box set, it's just the governments to play. Of course you get your hardcover rulebook, uh, which goes over the history of titans in the Great Crusades, uh, what happens on Mars up to and before um, the Horus Heresy itself, uh, and then of course how to play the game, uh, both open narrative and match play. The basic rules are very akin to the original rules from Titanicus in 88. The advanced rules are a bit more adding in things like uh, your reactor die, which is your additional die here, um, for determining stress level on your Titans. And your reactor die has different reactor results, and then this, which is the Mechanicum symbol, the Mechanicum die, which is where you accidentally awaken the machine spirit, and the Titan takes off and does something you don't want to do whenever you push its reactor. Uh, other plastic accessories, you're going to get a strategic objective marker, which is a down Titan head, uh, the first player marker for who's going first, and then six strategic assets. Now these are used um, when you're playing a match play or an open play game, or they're determined during a narrative play game, uh, to buy additional advantages. And some of them have models on the table that can actually be attacked and stuff. So for instance, your Apocalypse Launcher, or Power Relay, or Forge Shield Enhancer, or your Macro Cannon, are all things you can spend your strategy points on. And during the average game, you'll have three strategy points. So to skirmish level, so what we'll be playing today, we'll have two. So each of us could potentially buy one of these and have them deployed in the table. And they're effectively part of your army. So like the Macro Cannon just sits and shoots people. Um, same with the Apocalypse Launcher, you can fire barrages and stuff like that. You also get your location die for rolling for where you hit once the void shields are down. Um, and you get a scatter die for determining the scattering of blast weapons if they miss. And you get this handy 12 inch measuring grid, like ruler, which I really like. I actually really, I think of all the measuring gauges GW's done, the 12 inch one's my favorite because it's just, it's, it's compact enough that it's actually kind of like usable in a game. And I can use it one handed when I'm using camera. <laughs> um, which is handy. And then you also get mission objectives, which are handy for when you're doing match play. You get a set of these cards, which are also the mission objectives for the game. Uh, you get a really handy pair of these. Actually, two of these so, uh, game summaries with all the critical tables and stuff on them. Um, and really, this is everything you really need to play the game. All the other info you need is on your cards. Like, you don't need anything outside of what's going to be on your Titan terminals and this to play. The one thing I will say is super handy in this game is one of these get your war machine lasers out because <laughs> there's so much that's determined by arc uh, and how much of something you can see this this is this is weirdly useful so not normally something you need in gw games anymore super useful in this game in particular uh and yeah and that's it now um we also have a titan here this is the new titan box set let me just put it the way so we can show you him um if you want to check him out in a bit more detail uh i did do an on the paint table on painting this guy today where i talk a little bit about what's what's available in the box um and i did magnetize him so this is all you can build out of this box set so the core titan box for the warlord gives you apocalypse launchers for your carapace and Bellicosa Volcano Cannons for the arm. Now this is Top Dog, or Canis Verdix, as he's uh, known in all of the Horus Heresy novels. He uh, ends up being, I think, stuck on the top of a pyramid in Tisca, at, uh, and when in Prospero Burns, actually. He's one of the Warp Runners, um, or the Legio Astorum of the Titans. And I painted him up in the beautiful blue and gold. I want to do something different from my classic uh, red and gold, which I did for my my old Horus, Her Horus Heresy stuff. It was my, my original stuff is all the... Um, Death's Heads and Fire Wasps, the Ignatum, and the Legio Morta. So I decided to do something new. Super happy with how he turned out. Uh, and like I said, when the accessories eventually do come out for the different Titan arms, which I was a, a bit disappointed by, honestly, like half the fun of this game, especially when you crack this box open, you can see just how many 
combinations of things you can do, you don't get any box. The only option, literally the only bits I didn't use are this, which I'm not sure I didn't use because I didn't use it or because I don't know where it goes. I think it might actually be his back plate. I'm not 100% sure where that piece goes. I don't think, it might actually go just over his head right there. Yeah, actually it does. I left that off. That's actually a piece I forgot to use. I'll paint that now that later. I just realized looking at this art, this is this piece right here. That's what I forgot because I painted all these pieces separately and then assembled them. Um, it, the only piece I didn't use are the alternate head, which I'll use on my next one. So I clipped it and built it already so that I don't forget that that's the other head I need to use. And the blank shoulder guards and the traitor shoulder guards and a storm's a loyalist legion. So I gave them the crusade markings and I'll use the blank ones probably next for some of the bigger um, decals that come in the box. This is scale, and I think this is important to see how much bigger this guy is than the old ones. There's my 1988 Titan, and there's today's Titan. Um, and then for the Let's Play, I'm going to show you our forces. So we're playing a skirmish today, which is roughly 700 points, between me and Owen. Um, and a skirmish is basically what you can do out of the Grandmaster's box. So it's a Titan, and this is going to get a laugh out of this. Three knights, dan -da -da! <laughs> They're so little. It doesn't really matter as long as they're on the right bases, though. You, you don't really have to worry about it. Um, and these guys are about two-thirds the size of what the new Plastic Knights look like, but these are the Plastic Knights from Titan Legion. Uh, and they're going to be fighting a very, a very venerable other Warlord Titan, <laughs> which is uh, my old Dea Siri, who I painted up, who's conveniently on the same base size already. Um, I would use this base. I used to call this the Lord of the Rings Dragon Base. This base is... Um, the the base size of this this class of Titan of the world class Titan the magnificent stuff so uh, if you're looking for basing some old models or if you have some you want to use already he works great and he actually it's actually great because he looks the part of just like an old pattern warlord Titan that they found somewhere during the Great Crusade and he's got different guns so for the let's play I can show you a plasma annihilator um, and a um, so this one, this is the uh, Macro Gatling Blaster, which is funny because those are actually the weapons that the Warlord, the Emperor Titan has. And then his back, his carapace weapons are going to be a um, Vulcan Mega Bolter Array. So it totally works. Like he, he is, if you've got one of these lying around, you could 100% just use old Imperator Titans as Warlord Titans in this game. And they're really not far off. His legs are about the same size. I think the only thing that's not the same is his, his top. He's got these big spires on him. He's not as bulky across the shoulders and stuff, but... He's totally functional for this game. So we're playing with roughly the Grand Master Edition in models. They only have the one Warlord Titan. So it's going to be um, two Warlord class Titans with different weapon outfits. They're each about 700 points. Um, and I've got some House Cadmus and House Hawk Shroud uh, banners of knights to, to back them up and play some games. So we can show you the full gamut of the rules here. Uh, we will be using the full advanced rule set for this game and I'll call it everything during the first turn. Um, and we're gonna be playing Engage and Destroy from the match play missions. Now one of the fun things you can do later on, and actually you have to do when you build um, uh, forces, is using a maniple. Now the maniple is the basic core sort of like design component, and each different style of maniple gives you additional special rules. So there's three manuals in, or maniples in this rule book. There's the Axiom, which is the classic one. So it's a warlord, two reavers, uh, and two warhounds, and you have to have one of each as a mandatory component. And you get a maximum of five guys. And the benefit it gives you is Might of the Omnissiah. If a Titan from this maniple fails a command check when it's issued an order, um, orders can still be placed in the rest of the Titans even if you fail. So command checks must still be made for each one. So normally if I try and give a special order to a Titan and I fail my command check, um, you get the, the basically you, you don't get to issue anymore. It's like Battlefleet Gothic, you stop. But when you're playing an Axiom, um, then you get, to, you get to keep issuing orders no matter what. Because it's the most robust design of Maniple. Uh, then there is the Myrmidon Battle Line Maniple, and this is what I'll be building when I build my second Warlord. Uh, and it's, it requires two Warlords and a Reaver, and this is the heavy support version. And you can have an additional Warlord and additional Reaver. Um, you get overwhelming firepower. When you give them first fire or split fire orders, uh, you get to do that on two plus, regardless of modifiers. They're just ready to gun. Uh, and then finally, there's the Venator Light Maniple, and that's a Reaver and four Warhounds, and you have to have at least two Warhounds and a Reaver. And you get opportunistic strike. If an enemy's unit's shields collapse uh, by attacking by a Warhound Titan from this maniple, the Reaver can immediately make an attack with one of its weapons following the combat sequence on page 33. This means the Reaver can potentially attack several times in the same phase, as well as attacking normally when it's activated. So, like, that's cool. You basically get free shots on anyone that a uh, Warhound takes the shields off of when this fight. So it kind of like represents their pack hunter mentality and how light and fast they are. Uh, the other thing which you will get when you build a Maniple is you'll get a Princeps Senioris, and this is Warlord traits basically. He automatically gets plus two to all of his command rolls uh, for getting issued an order because he's just very, very good at what he does. Um, and he gets to roll or pick on the trade table, if you guys agree. And you can get things such as Dominant Strategist, uh, once during the battle, it's sort of a control phase. 
Uh, the player can use the trait to take the Opus Titanic and become the first player. <laughs> you just become the first player. You don't have to roll off. He just does it if he's got that trait. Um, Ironclad Tyrant, once per turn. Mission order, uh, you can reroll your command check. Swift kill, you can make a 45 degree turn before you shoot. But you subtract one to hit. Devoted Servant of the Machine, when making a repo uh, repair roll for him, add one to a single D6 to try and bring up a shield or fix the system. Favored by Fortune, once per round, the controller player could reroll a single D6 to hit or save. Uh, and Will of Iron, uh, the first time a catastrophic damage roll is made for this Prince Up Senior as Titan roll D10. If it's equal or beats the result of the catastrophic damage roll, it's ignored and has no effect. He just, he wills the Titan to work. Uh, so those are some interesting force composition stuff you can do later on. So we're not going to use any of that stuff because we don't have maniples here. Um, and whenever you take support, so you can take additional Titans outside of the maniple. Um, and that's what uh, your Questorus Night Banners actually count as as well. They don't get to benefit from any of the maniple special rules, but you can still take as many extra things as you want. So you can go over five Titans in a bigger game, but the supported stuff is considered to be like seconded to the maniple for the course of the battle. And it's not part of the team, basically, so it doesn't, it doesn't benefit from the team benefits. So none of my, my knights will actually benefit from anything. Um, and it would be a bit silly to to make both these guys Prince up, uh, Prince up Senoris. Considering, like, if you need to use the Warlord traits, but considering that there's no one for them to actually lead, it doesn't doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It just beefs them up for no reason. So we're just going to use these basic Titans, um, take our banner support here, and of course in future games we have more models and stuff as more stuff releases, we'll start using some of the Maniple rules. There are also legions that you can use, uh, specific rules for them, and the Griffonicus have rules in this book. Um, as I'm playing a Storm, we won't have any uh, ec extra rules played in this game, uh, because they're the only ones, I believe. Oh, sorry, Tempestus is in here as well. Griffonicus and Tempestus. So there's two, two to choose from, um, but we won't actually use these this game. They give you additional things, so like... Uh, if you're playing Griffonicus, you get Lust for Glory. After both sides are deployed, a player commanding a Legion of Griffonicus back can declare that any of their Titans will claim a Titan as its target. Um, if a Titan attacks its intended target, the controlling player can reroll hit rolls of one and add one to their armor rolls. However, if another Titan attacks the intended target, then they're forfeit. So basically, you have to duel, and you get bonuses to duel, but it, no one else can attack them. And then Mainstay of the Legion, um, you have to take lots of Reavers. <laughs> So, as a result, they can often, uh, when something a Legio Griffonicus Maniple, players can select to put one Reaver Titan in place of a Warland or Warhound. So you could take a Axiom Maniple with Griffonicus and have a pair of Reavers um, instead of a Reaver and a Warlord, and then a Warhound Titan as your basic form. And not have to take the, the Warlord Titan. Uh, and then it's Enhanced Auspex Relays and Gravitas Plating. So a uh, Griffonicus Warhound can be equipped with enhanced auspexes for 10 points. Whenever a Legion Griffonicus Titan makes an attack, it can measure the distance any targets within 12 um, and before declaring to range. So you can't normally pre-measure in this game, but they can with their auspexes. And then Gravitus Plating, uh, a Reaver is chosen as part of the Maniple in replace of a Warlord Titan. It can be fitted with Gravitus Plating for 20 points. This increases its armor value in the body by 1 and legs by 1, but subtracts 1 from its default and boosted speed characteristics. So it's a heavily armored Reaver. So you get a uh, different level of traits, basically, for your Prince of Senoris. So you get your own table of three different ones. You get Reckless Maverick, Master Duelist, and Hunter without equal, as opposed to the six that you get for the generic ones. And they can also take Motive Subreactors. Uh, so if you take a Breaver um, in place of a Warhound Titan, as the main thing, because you can swap up as well, actually. They can be fitted with Motive Subreactors for 25 points. It allows the Reaver to use its boosted speed and maneuver characteristic without pushing. However, each time a Titan suffers a critical hit to its legs, uh, roll a d6, and on a three or less, the reactor level is increased by one, because it's got extra juice going to the legs. Tempestus gets Glory in Death, which lets it make a command check um, if it's about to take catastrophic damage to make an attack before it's um, before it's destroyed. Fury the Machine, when making an Awakened Machine Spirit roll for Legio Tempestus Titan, you can reroll one, twos, and threes. If the reroll is also a one, two, or three, it stands. Uh, combat Drop. This is pretty cool. When a player chooses a stratagem, they must secretly write down the name of one of their titans that has a scale of six or lower. Play stratagem at the start of the deployment phase because they're held in orbit and they drop down in a titan drop pod. This is pretty cool. And then uh, Chasmata Pazzer and Laser Destructors. You get special laser destructors. They cost five points. Um, sorry, what is it? Upgraded with chest of focusing technology for a cost of five points multiplied by its dice value. So if it's a laser blaster with a dice value of three, it'd be 15 points. Um, and it gets adds three inches to its short range and six to its long, making it easier to hit with. And then, of course, gets on personal traits as well: adamantium resolve, stormborn, and defiant warrior. So let's talk a little bit about the anatomy of a titan before we get set up for our game. Um, now there are lots of places for information on here, but it's actually relatively simple when you go through and actually start playing the game. Um, the first thing is your actual stats. So you have your command value. That's what you have to roll equal to or higher on a d10 um, to 
take an order or do anything that requires your princeps to actually issue a command. So if you want to issue one of the six orders during the strategy phase, you would place the order dice on the Titan, make a command roll, and if you succeed, um, you would of course uh, then it basically do that order immediately to resolve whatever the effects of that order are. Um, some restrict what you do later on. So first fire, for instance, allows you to fire during the strategy phase, but then you can't move in the movement phase later on, but you can fire again uh, later on in the actual combat phase. Now your Prince up Senior so we get plus two to that. Ballista skill is what you need to roll to hit on your dice um, when you're actually making attack with a dice pool. Speed is what you move. Now every speed and maneuver value has two ratings. The first one is what you do normally. The second one is when you push reactor and you have to roll reactor die and apply the results. Now the reactor die um, has the Omnisiah symbol, which is basically when you awaken the machine spirit accidentally, potentially, you can make a command check to avoid it. Um, or it's how far your reactor gets pushed. There's three faces of one, one Omnisiah symbol, which also counts the face of one if you make a command check, um, a face of two reactor results, and then a blank. If you roll a blank, it pays off. You don't, you push your reactor, but you don't overheat at all. Any other result, you move um, the reactor that many spaces. And of course, if your machine spirit awakens and you fail your command roll, you have to roll on a table as well. Um, so if you push your reactor for speed during the move phase, you can move nine inches instead of six of the reaver. Um, if you want to maneuver, uh, you can put power to the stabilizers. That allows you to uh, make an additional turn basically for a reaver. So normally he can make two 45 degree turns. Um, he makes three if he pushes it. Then you have your servitor clades. That's how many D6s you roll when you make repair checks and then you spend whatever the results are to do things. So. Uh, you can use a 4+, plus, for instance, to bring back a Void Shield or repair results. Uh, most things that are less than 4, they'll just get discarded. So your, your servitors are working away, and you roll the die and try and see what results they get. And then you spend them on various things, because you're the, the princeps are basically ordering people to do stuff. Then you have your Plasma Reactor. You're all good until you hit a orange result. Uh, if you're in the orange result, you have to make overheat checks. And in the basic game, nothing happens. You just take a damage hit, basically. Um, there's no like other effects, but you can have your void shields collapse. You can shut down automatically. Lots of bad things can happen. <laughs> and then your void shields are spent to actually cancel results. So um, whenever you uh, take a hit from a dice pool, you have to make a, a roll basically afterwards to see if it collapses your void shields or not. And any hits that um, are equal to or higher, you can cancel by spending a void shield. So like if I get hit by this many dice, I would roll my saves. So I've made my saves now. Uh, I can spend a three plus to cancel this one a three plus to cancel this one, but I can't cancel one or a two. I failed that save um, and it makes one go away. So what happens is these will these will get canceled, but every one that I fail reduces my, my shield strength for the rest of the attack. Um, and each weapon is considered to be a separate attack. So if I'm shot with like a Vulcan Mega Bolter and I fail at say four shield, a five, I get be four and my shields collapse, I go to X, whatever the next attack would just go directly into this right here, which is, um, the uh, the location damage for my head, my body, and my legs. Now, whenever you take a hit from that, you roll d6 and have the strength of the attack. So, for instance, a Bellicosa Volcano Cannon is strength 12. <laughs> so, it's automatically, you, there's a location to see where you actually land a hit. Um, it automatically would do at least this damage if I rolled a 1 to the head. So, it rolls a 2, though. It is a 14. does a devastating hit. So, a direct hit does just a point of damage. You move the track 1. Devastating hit is 2 points of damage. Uh, critical hit is 1, 2, 3 points of damage. And then you have to see what you go to the first level here, basically. So, the last thing to show, basically, is uh, what the actual weapon cards do. So, like I said, in the anatomy of a card, you have your point value for your weapons, its name, its short and long range. There's no pre-measuring in this. So, short range would be 30 for the Belkos of Volcano Can. Long would be 60. How many dice it rolls when it attacks and its strength when it actually gets through your void shields, and then it's arc. So everything in this game has an arc. Like I said before, um, the carapace weapons are all fixed forwards. They fire on the lines along the front here, uh, and then you have a 45 degree angle arc for your arm weapons. And then finally, if you get hit in the arm when your void shields are down, uh, if a strength 11 plus uh, thing hits you, you flip the card to disabled, and once it's disabled, if it's hit again, it'll detonate and hit you in the body at strength seven or hit you in the body at strength nine because it can blow up. Uh, you can also spend your repair results during the damage control phase to try and bring it back online. Let's talk about meeting engagement. Now we're playing a 700 point skirmish, which means we have two stratagem points to spend. Should last under two hours and the underdog margin is 150, which means you can have a swing of less than 150 than your opponent basically in this game. You have to spend at least up to that level. Um, so we've each spent stratagem points. I bought a macro cannon, uh, which has a handy card here. 
And it deploys in my deployment zone. It shoots 12 to 24 inches, is minus one at long range, two dice at strength 10, and it's ordnance. Now that trait means that it rerolls ones uh, against armor, basically, when it's trying to break through armor. Page 65 of the rulebook has that, and that costs both my stratagem points. Owen's taken an apocalypse missile uh, strong point. Now these can also be attacked, just like um, anything else on the table. It's a 30 to 120 inch range, hits on a four plus, um, and has a uh, 360 degree firing arc. Plus one hit at long range, five dice, strength four, and it's barrage. So what's nice is it's strength four, which means it can take down void shields. I think strength three or less cannot. Set up a meeting engagement. It's a bit like doing a match play game in 40K. What you do though, is you secretly determine your objectives. Both players roll 2d6, um, and they get to pick between the two objectives that you have. So on a one to two, it's engage and destroy. It's just trying to blow stuff up. Retrieval, you're trying to get the crew of a down Titan back. Uh, four glory and honor, five hold the line, and six vital cargo, trying to get across the board. So um, we've both rolled already and, and done the setup for this off camera. Uh, and I rolled retrieval, or I chose retrieval. I rolled retrieval and glory and honor. I chose retrieval, which means I'll place this objective in the center of the table. Um, if I end a move within one inch of it, they climb aboard, and then I can exit any board edge by getting within one inch of it with my Titan. And I automatically score 20 VPs at the end of the game by doing so. My secondary victory points at the end of the battle. Um, I wreak havoc. I score two victory points for each destroyed enemy unit with a scale of five or less, and four victory points for destroyed enemy unit with a scale of six or more. So if I can kill his knights, I'll get extra bonus VPs. If I can kill the enemy warlord titan, I'll get even more. Revealed he has engage and destroy, so he'll score victory points based on the rating of what he destroys. So if he destroys my knights, who have a scale, I believe, of three? Yep. Um, he'll get four victory points. And if he destroys my Titan, he'll get an extra 15. So potential 19 from that. And then secondary objective, minimize losses. For each model with its um, that's still on the, the board at the end of the game, he gets at least half their scale value. Um, sorry, they have at least half their scale value left. They get five victory points. So if just one Night Titan survives, they'll automatically have five victory points. And for every uh, first Roller Titan, he'll get five as well. So potential 29 on the table. Sorry, 28 on the table for the, um, the Legio Ignatum guys. So Owen won the roll to roll for deployments, um, and he has uh, gotten off the, what was it, number two chance encounter, sorry, standoff actually, number three, um, which is 12 inches up to one side, and then all the way down to a corner. So it's kind of a lateral deployment. Um, and there's a bunch of different ones. There's a basic lines of battle six inches on. Um, this is a, a, a random deployment zone one where you have to roll to your eyes to see where they're displaced. And then a stage one, which is close quarters, where you can be, depending on how big class your Titan you are, the, the lighter Titans are forward, the heavier Titans are back. And then the battle begins. Um, once you've deployed, you have to roll for who has um, first player. And then a meeting engagement is between four and six rounds. At the end of the fourth battle round, roll a d10. On a nine or ten, it ends. And on a five or more, it ends in the fifth battle round. Otherwise, you go to six. And at the end of that, it's victory. And if, of course, you get annihilated, one side will win. Deployed Vertex Canix. Uh, and then, of course, across here, we have my knights from House Hawk Shroud. You deployed the house hot, the house ha, ha, Cadmus Knights, uh, and then over here we have the uh, the Fire Wasp uh, hanging up behind this building. So we're gonna roll right now for turn one. See who the first player is. So it's D six. I got a four as well. Six. It is you. So first player goes to you, which means in the first phase of the game, which is the strategy phase, um, you can issue orders. Now when you issue an order, you take a die and you apply its effect by passing a command roll. Now if you fail your command roll, uh, you can't issue any more orders a lot like BFG. So uh, in this phase, the only one that would probably be worthwhile would be full stride, which allows you to move again in the shooting phase if you want. And you're going to put that on your knights. Yep. So the knights have a command of what? Six. And you get plus two because your uh, seniors is in, in effect. So looking for a four plus. Cranks. And he gets it on eight. So they will get to move again. They won't get to shoot in the shooting phase, but they can move twice, basically, 10 inches. Yeah. Uh, they don't get... The only orders that knights can't do is they can't do emergency repairs because they're not titans, and they can't do shutdown because they're not titans. They can do all the battlefield orders, basically. The stuff that, like, manages your reactor, repairs you. They just die. <laughs> so they don't do any of that stuff. I issue an order. I'm going to do much the same thing. I'm going to issue an advance order on my knights. So I roll a d10. I need the same results, and I get it with a six. So then I can advance. I don't need to issue any more orders. Uh, do you want to issue an order to the Fire Wasp over there? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm good. No, okay. So now we didn't act our stratagems, um, and that means that we would be able to shoot with our guns. I want to shoot 24 inches, but you can shoot 120 with yours. Yeah. So how far do you want to shoot, and who do you want to shoot at? I'm gonna take out your Titan. All right. First shot. So perfect. We can actually show how attack roll works here. Now it has a range of 120 to 60, and I think it, it's, it's at long it's range. 30 it's plus to one. 120. 30 to 120. So at, at 120, we're obviously over 30. You're gonna get plus one to hit. And you have line of sight. 
which means you'll be hitting on a three plus with your dice pool of what? Five. So five dice on threes. All right, so three hits. So now I have my void shields currently up and they're on a three plus right now. So I get to roll dice equal to the number of hits. Every three plus the void shields absorb. Every one or two reduces my void shield on the track. But I pass them all so my void shields remain intact and not stripped. Strategy phase done, orders issued and whatnot. We move on to the movement phase. Um, so we get to move. I uh, did not get first player, so you can move first in the movement phase. I move the big guy. I'm going to use my reactor though. Okay, so you're going to push it to move your second value. Yeah. For and two. you get two on your reactor dice. But I get to watch six for the big guy. Now you have to move anywhere in your arc. So you maintain your facing and you can move anywhere inside that front 45 degrees. So much the same with me. I can move up. Uh, now you can also move backwards or sideways at half rate, so it'll cost two inches of movement. I will also push it and roll my reactor die to see what happens. I roll blank, so my reactor doesn't get pushed. This is the benefit of the, of the advanced rules. There is a chance of your reactor going, uh, you know, a, a lot hotter than normal, but you also might just manage it perfectly and have nothing happen at all. So I can move six in my front arc. So I'll go like so, up five, and then I'll pivot slightly. And then move six. Your household banner. They're going ten. Now they have the awesome rule of basically just moving wherever they want, like in 40k. And as long as they end within three inches of each other, they also ignore difficult terrain because they're highly maneuverable. They're your your scout asset in this game. They can go wherever they like. Now they are super vulnerable to, to fire from enemy titans. And right now we're trying to keep our guys alive. So we don't want them to just die. So scooting between buildings is a good idea. Also move ten inches. Heading up, everyone else just moving along as well. Now you do get benefits from cover, so it is handy to be inside of it. So damage control phase, we get to roll for our servitor clades. I don't currently have anything wrong with me, but I'll roll anyway to see what happens. Um, and you're first player, actually, so you can roll first. I'm gonna roll because I want to vent some heat off. That's right, because you have two on your plasma right now. So you've rolled two, two threes. Well, it's not successes, you spend them on whatever, because different things can have different results. So when you do a repair action, None of you them are spend three. the dice result. <laughs> well, your weapon results, if your weapon's destroyed, could be on a three plus, you never know. Um, None of yours are, probably. Oh, well, that's not accurate. <laughs> oh, sure. My Vulcan Mega Volter is. There you go, so they get repaired on a 3+. plus. So you yeah. spend your results to do things. So disabled weapon is X, because it's whatever the weapon card is. Vent Plasma 4+, you're going to use your two 4 pluses, I assume, to vent Plasma for your reactor, and go back to status normal. Now, when you hit status orange, that's when you have to start making reactor table rolls. So I'll roll mine, just to see what I could do. Uh, I could do nothing actually this turn because I rolled a terrible. Oh, choosing to fire. Now, when you, we pick the knights to fire, we get to move them again because of their special order right now. Um, but or we could fire with our big guys. You get to go first with the uh, the fire wasp over there. And he's gonna try and shoot his gatler at him. I don't know if I'm quite in range. Okay, now you have to shoot all the guns at the same target unless you have the split fire order. Anyway, so you yeah. shoot all your guns into my into the the uh, can uh, so the canvas verdicts over here. Here's where the laser pointers come in handy. You absolutely have a line of fire, but I'll be at minus two to hits because I'll be more than 50% obscured. Now the one difference is your carapace weapons, when they fire at me, can only fire whatever the half of them that's in is in. So your Vulcan Mega Bolter Array will have its number of dice pool because only half of your model can actually draw a line of fire to me. No pre-measuring. So now that you've declared your firing solution, you measure ranges. Now the oh, Vulcan Mega Bolter is oh, no. out of range. That, no, no. That, that's everybody. Oh, everybody's 24. All right. <laughs> yeah. So all the shots just go and that's it. With the firing solution done, because you're at a line of fire, I'm going to go with my knights and they're going to move again and go hide behind this building and not get shot. And of course the Ignosic will train. You can go again as well. Get ready for the ambush. <laughs> That's right, try and ambush me as I go and try and retrieve this Titan crew. Could fire back right now, but both of my Bellicosa cannons have a special rule called um, draining. Whenever I fire them, I gain reactor heat. I overheat a little bit. Now it means I would go into the next movement phase with reactor stress on me because it would happen after my damage control phase. So I'm actually just going to shoot my Apocalypse Missile Launcher. I think that's a better bet here uh, and start throwing it into you. So now I'm in the same boat you are though. Only one of my two launchers can actually see because of the building. And that means I'll have my dice pool from 10 down to five. Minus two to hit here because of the fact that you're 50% obscured. Um, but I'm plus one to hit because I'm over 30 inches right now, I'm pretty sure, because we just measured. Yeah. Inside 30 actually, so I'm not going to get that plus one either. So I'm just minus two because you're obscured. So hitting on fives, not terrible, but that's not actually a D6. <laughs> I have all of them. You have all the D6s apparently. There we go, two hits. Nice. Void shields a three plus, and it wasn't worth it because your void shields just absorb all the damage. That was turn one, on to turn two. We is used to the original edition of this where you would hand back and forth first player. We actually dice off again, and you are once again first player. So you can go first in the initiative phase and next stratagems and issue orders. Next stratagems first actually, oh, sorry. Right. So you would fire your guns. Yes, fire the, the, the apocalypse missile. All right, try and take some shields off me. So five dice once again, looking yep. for threes. 
getting four. And I have to make four saves for my shields of three plus still because I'm active. I fail two. So blam blam, my shields are down to my last stage of three plus. Over to you. Speedy boots, they're gonna get that order to, to rush again. Okay, I have to see if I ignite my stratagem. Oh. I don't think I'm within 24 though. No firing solution, so yeah, now you can go back to doing your orders. <laughs> get them though, guys. I get them. They do. So they get to... Uh, they'll get to move again. Move twice during the combat yes. phase. I attempt to give split fire to uh, my Warlord Titan. Um, and that means that he can't make any turns during the movement phase, but he can shoot two different targets, and he does. Uh, so back over to you. Do you want to issue any other orders? Nope. We're nope. You're happy? Okay. I'm going to issue one more order uh, to my Questorus banner. They're going to move twice. Four plus. And they do. First player. So it is now the movement step, and you can choose who moves first. Three knights. I go eight, and then two more. Yeah, go, go take rubble. cover. Yep, and this guy's basically gonna follow behind. Moving forward. Something cool that I mentioned before, your uh, carapace weapons have a minimum range equal to your scale. So I can't fire my apocalypse launchers anything within 10 inches of me, which is kind of neat. So I have I have the uh, the, the blind spot basically because I'm so tall. Back over to me. We're gonna go 10 with these knights. We're gonna do the rush and hope we live. <laughs> We're going around. You, where are you going, Fire Wasp? Can't change your facing, but you can move oh, up to four. Do you want to change my facing? Well, you make one turn if you want. Yeah. 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 You put your you put marker down. Okay. Pivoting. Whoop. There you go. Good luck. I'm going to push my reactor and roll reactor die to try and move my enhanced distance, and I do gain a reactor stress, but I get to move six inches this turn. You just can't turn. I just can't turn at all. So I'm going to go forward to here, whoop, and be done. Yeah, first move. You have first in the combat phase, yes, if you'd like to go again. Ooh, these little guys are gonna go, and they're basically gonna do, they're not gonna get within two. Okay. And they're all gonna get outside of your front arcs, like so. Movement phase, you forgot to roll for our server clades. What happens? You have to roll your four dice, because you're first player? I'm actually, I have nothing to do. Okay, so, so then for me, I can reduce my reactor shoot. stress down to one. Okay. And bring back two shields. One, two. So you've moved your knights, I moved my knights. Oh, back behind the building. Peace out. <laughs> Let's not do this. Ah, waste your turn. Okay. Phase for you, do you want to try and shoot me? I, I can't even see you can't anymore. can't see, that's right. Yep, so the fire solution's gone. Uh, back to me, I have Ardex defense cannon, cannons. When a Titan's activated in the combat phase, each enemy units within its front or rear arc and within six takes these three, six, five hits. You're not in my front and rear arc though. You've, you've flanked me wisely. So I can't shoot you. Side 45 degrees of me, so nobody shoots this phase. Uh, and I'm not within range of my my retrieval objective either. Turn three, and let's roll to see who has the initiative this turn. And phase, nothing happens right now. You have first player once again. Stratagem's first, yeah, you get to fire your, your super missile. Hitting on threes. Four this time. Nicely done, so four saves, a three plus. Uh, we fail once, we lose a void shield. Moved out of line of fire of my macro cannon. It's not within 24 of you because you didn't move, so it is on to the next. Uh, so we do some charge. orders. You do a charge order? Charge in, four plus. We got them, buddies. No, they failed. Charge. They, they didn't get the order. We're not going to give any orders to the Warlord. He's pretty happy where he is. Uh, and the Questorus Night Banner, I think, is going to get to advance again. Oops, not D10. D10. They do. So once again, move twice. Movement phase, you have first player, but you can force, you can choose for me to go first if you'd like. First, okay, uh, then we are going to move. Uh, so my knight is going to push his reactor, get it, or so my uh, warlord's gonna push his reactor yet again, roll reactor die, and see what happens. Gains a heat. Move six, <laughs> so we're gonna just advance up to here, and then we'll pivot. Sorry, we'll advance this way. You. We're gonna advance, and then I'm just gonna pivot basically my 45. Looks good. Little man's. And little man's gonna go. They're gonna move their 10, because you've let your flank be exposed. And again. Yep. Let's get them <laughs> so moving to base to base, or within two inches, so you ignore my void shields now with your melee weapons. They all attack with two? They'll attack with their melee weapons, yep. My front arc, so I can't auto defense you. And it's time for some repair roll. No, it's repair phase. So, uh, server clades, I bring back one void shield and reduce one reactor stress, because I get two. 
guy. Yeah. Shoot some guns. Let's do it. We're All gonna right. fire the uh, the Vulcan Mega Bolt Array. All right. Uh, so everything I imagine is firing into him. Yep. And how much of me can you see? I'm 50% obscured, but I'm partially obscured, so minus one to hit. But both your arrays can see me with the paired weapon trait. Now, the top guys, of course, um, you have to measure for each gun individually. It's a bit hard for him because he's just, he's an old model with five five guns in the top. I'll reroll two of these because you get 12 shots. Hitting and they hit on fours, fours because of minus one. one. Gotcha. I'm not within 10 inches for the plus one. Yep. Every six counts as two. Oof, rapid roll, that's cool. So just reroll two misses. So we've got these successes so far, and then two. It's got one more. So it's four. There we go. Yeah, okay, so four plus that. Perfect. Um, so now I'm at my void shield saves. I'm at full strength, but every one or two will collapse the shield. And he claps three shields. So for the next gun, my void shield strength is only four plus, and I'm almost out of void shields. Now, any additional hits once your shields collapse are ignored, it's considered that the blowing out of the shields just drop the rest of the hits. The next gun will then hit the body. Yaller, so you can try and overboost the plasma into me. Six more dice, hitting on fours. Yep. Take uh, one. One. All right, four plus. Nope. What do you do? I'm good. My shield absorbs it. Yep. And then finally, the Sun Fury Plasma Annihilator. Yep. Not going to bother boosting it because you're just trying to class my shields here, I imagine. Yeah. Get Strength in. is irrelevant. Three. Three. All right, so three more saves of four plus. One might get three. If two get three, they do. You class my shields. Blam, blam. My shields get blown out. It's over to me. So I can't target these fellas with my auto defense array because you're in my side arc right now, but I can happily shoot all my guns into him. Um, there's no penalties for being engaged in melee here. I basically just ignore these guys like the gnats they are. Imagine as I ended within one inch, the crew is climbing aboard right now, which means this gets placed on my base. And I have to try and get off the table with it. So, um, I'm gonna shoot all my guns. Once again, I'm pretty sure only, no, both of them have a line of sight, so both my, my gun turrets can fire. We're gonna start trying to strip your shields with the Apocalypse Missile Launcher. It's within 30, so there's no bonus to hit, so I'll still be minus one. Shots on fours. And that's going to be four hits total from the Apocalypse Launcher. Three plus. So one I blow one shield. Uh, I'm going to fire. I don't want to do it. I'm going to hope this works. Oh, no, I need my shields back. I don't want to heat up my, my because I use my, um, I use my, uh, my reactor to power my volcano cannons. They have the draining special rule. So to fire both of them, I'd gain two reactors. And I want my servers to bring my shields back up in line. So I'm not going to shoot them this turn. So it's back to you. You try and stab me with your... Yeah, I'm nice. Auto hit me with three melt guns right now. It's just do a strength eight hit. My shields are down, but even if they weren't, you're within two inches, so you ignore my void shields. I just take three strength eight hits. Now, when you hit the body, you're going to roll. You can either decide to target me, which I don't think you can do with the melt guns because you're not rolling to hit because you have to roll to hit with a minus two, um, or you roll location die for each hit and see where it lands, or sorry, to see where they all land. So roll the location die and see where it happens. So it's one for all three shots? One for all three shots in this case. That's an order die. <laughs> there you go. None of these are nice. <laughs> No, that's it right there. You had it. You had it. Oh, that one, yeah. Uh, the head? So three strength eight hits to the head. So D6 plus eight, and we can salt whatever the results are. Come back here. And it's going to be 13, 13, 11. So the 11's ignored. You need at least a 13 to do some damage, but you've done two direct hits, which means one, two points of buckled armor. I'm one away from adding plus one to all your damage rolls. Battle cannons could hit on your weapon, because you're at close quarters, you could hit on your weapon skill instead of your ballistic skill, because you're so close. Yeah. Um, and because you're inside my, uh, my shields, you'll need to roll, you'll be able to hurt, what's the strength of them? Uh, five. Ah, uh, so it's only your melee weapons will be able to damage me right now because my minimum armor is 12 right now. So the 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 melee weapons can do it. So you can attack with those. Yeah. The swords will hit on a three in melee. You uh, could do targeted attacks to try and hit something else. Plus one to hit. So oh, nice. So they'll hit on twos. So you could uh, target attack if you want as well. I think we're gonna go for your head. All right, and minus one. So you hit on threes against the head basically as you try and stab me in melee. Get him, boys. Uh, that was a mistake. One, all three hit, because you never have to choose a target location, or sorry, you never get a penalty for target location with melee weapons. If you stab me in the head three times at strength seven. Looking for sixes. Looking for sixes. Or trying five, to be, no, you need sixes. It's 13 for the head. One. Bam. Bam. So now you're plus one to damage me. And that's it. Plus one, your battle cans won't quite be able to damage it, because you only get a total of 12, and you have 13 doing damage to me. Knights, you charge the roller titan and lived. <laughs> uh, so I get to uh, another combat move, and that means these knights are going to move. And much like you, stay in your side arc. We'll just be here. In phase, uh, nothing's gonna be happening right now. Reactors aren't stressed. We're going to four. The game might end at the end of this turn. Let's see what we can see. Oh, again. All right, so I won the roll, so I have an issue this turn. Use gas sets, let's try and shoot. See you night. So we're gonna try and fire our macro cannon into them. This ordinance hitting at minus one, and you're also obscured, so minus two, so it needs a six to hit. 
Hits once. Strength 10. No um, saves against that. So no saves against that from your ion shields. And it gets a total of 13. So devastating hit. So devastating hit, which means two structure points. So you move it over two on the track. One more, and every hit after that's going to start killing a knight. Pocket this missile strong point is going to shoot. And now you have line of fire still. Uh, which would be plus one, but I'm minus two to hit because you barely have line of fire. Or you could just take the minus two to hit without a plus one because you're within 30 now. Directly, I think, makes the most sense right now. Dodge rule is minus two. The problem is it's only strength four. It ain't it's, great. Oh, my shield's already down. That's right. Actually, you can't do anything to him. So we're going to shoot yeah. these guys. That makes more sense. With the flat minus two, yep. just rolling for sixes. All right. Hit some sixes, try and shoot the knights. Uh, two extra dice. Yep. The only reason they can is because they have barrage. That makes sense. Yeah, because you shoot a line of fire minus two. Sixes. Hey, one. one. And the strength is... Four. So four for the knights. They're ion shields at strength one to six with three knights. is a four plus to ignore it. They do. Let's do some orders. Uh, I think we charge. In that charge order with the uh, Scion Marshal. So they go three right. plus... No, they don't get it. And I can't do any more orders. Charges. <laughs> can, I, can I charge you while I'm already there? There's orders to do? No. They're all kind of where they want to be right now. Sounds just good. start moving. All right. Move first. Where would you like to go? All right, let's, uh, let's heat up the reactor, big man. Pushing it. Oh, it takes two. Then the yellow. Six. Yeah. And go like that. Oh dear, my shields are down. This could be bad. Me. Well, I guess I guess the knights just go. So I want to be able to use my laser cannons, which means I need to just stand just inside of two of you. <laughs> uh, and I want to go sideways to do it. I can move ten. So because I use a five-inch template on the. Uh, the Bellicosa Volcano Cannon. I don't want to get my own knights in range. I just want to sit within two so they can use their melted guns and stuff. Knights. Now you can just block me because I can't move through them. They're going to move around. Now I will get my probably auto gun shots against this now. The, but one, the one's going to be sitting in the front basically yeah. and will pin you against the wall. That's right. So he'll walk to like here. His friend will go all in. And basically harass me. And they'll be like that because they're good. Within two. Lots. Within two. Uh, within three of each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. what I mean. So there we go. Let me take go here and see. I can still move a little bit, and it's just going to be to go in my back arc, which would cost two. Just back up slightly, and try and get more models in my front arc. And I can still pivot. Control. We really need to bring some stuff back up for plus. I get two shields back. Oh, sorry. I need a six for. I have to spend a six to ignite it, and then a four plus will bring one back. So no, I go to four it's plus. Fives for shields. Oh, it is five for shields. That's right. It's four for your energy. So, so energy. all I've done is reignite my shields right now. Or to drop my reactor, but I don't need to drop my reactor right now, so I'm good. So it's over to you. And you got two, four, a four and a five. So I'll bring my one shield up, and I'll reduce my heat by one. Okay. All right. I have first player, so I can choose to combat first, and I will. I think we just go with. I try and kill these knights. I have one shield back right now, which is not boding well. I think we try and cripple this guy's gun. We're gonna attack, uh, and we're gonna use our melee weapons into your plasma annihilator, and our melted guns into your plasma annihilator as well. It's have to randomize, unfortunately. So, where's your location die? Let's go, melted guns! They hit the leg. Three strength eight hits. 14, 14 in the leg, so that's two direct hits, so two points of damage. Do our melee attacks into your arms on two plus. They all, oops, that's not a die. <laughs> they all hit. Uh, and it's strength seven You're into. For 11s to get into my sword or my. my well, which one? Plasma Annihilator. Plasma Annihilator. Because plasma 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 I can choose. Okay. Um, so the Plasma Annihilator, I need, I need 11, so I need to roll fours. So one. Disabled, so I flipped over the Plasma Annihilator, which means hopefully I can survive this barrage of shooting. Are done, so it's back over to you. Guns? Are you gonna try and do these guys first, or? I think we will use the little. There's no reason not to at this point, I don't think. They're already inside your shield. Yeah, and I might, well, I also might kill one right now with my um, my defense batteries. Yeah, we're gonna, gonna, I'll get two attacks against them. them. So they're gonna open with their Meltas. Okay. And your leg. Uh oh. And then eight. So a 13, one. yeah, that'll be one. And that means that I take a direct hit. Whoop. Add some more. All right, you're plus one to this right now, so you're effectively strength eight. Looking for twos. They all hit. All right, and they're all... Strength eight, looking for 13s. 13, so, so you five need fives. Plus. One. All right, so it's just a direct hit, which puts it up again. Still a plus one. To me. All right, well, Warlord's going to fire. First, his Ardex Defensor Cannon goes off. Um, each enemy unit that's within, so not model, takes D3 strength five hits. It actually didn't matter how many within my front arc. So D3 is two strength five hits. So strength five, you shrug on a... Uh, four plus. Ion shields. 
I laugh. I'm oh. pretty sure you always get ion shields, even though within two inches. Void shields. Uh, some of the rest of my guns, I guess we just try and blast this guy. He's got all his shields up, unfortunately, but we're gonna do it. Shots on threes from the apocalypse launchers. We're within 30, so just straight dice. So Lots ones and twos go away. There you go, three plus. Oh my gosh, laughs. And then once again, there's no point in me firing my volcano cannon because yeah, they're not they're not gonna get through that shield. What? Do I wanna just do it? Yeah, I'm just gonna do it. I'm gonna fire them back. <laughs> We're gonna fire them both. Uh, so the first one on a two. Hit. Sorry, on a three actually, so it misses, which means it actually scatters. Oh. Go. Uh, this way nine, so I don't think it hits anything. Because nine from the middle. No, it's not gonna hit anything. Blam. Nope. Uh, okay. And then the second one on a three plus. Come on, volcano cannon. <laughs> Again. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Goes that way seven, so it won't hit anything either. Uh, I take two because it's draining to my reactor. Roll reactor dice when you fire a draining weapon, it just advances your reactor state. I think it specif specifies it just does that, doesn't actually roll reactor dice. Right, opening with the Volter array, trying to shoot my poor Canis Vertex here. I don't think we're within 10. Might be, it's close. I think we're Not just quite, just yeah. outside. So I don't get the plus one, so I'm hitting you on threes instead of twos. All you gotta do is collapse the shield. And sixes count as two. Uh oh. <laughs> and I'll reroll two of these. Yes. There we go. Oh man, so six, seven, eight, nine for pluses. I'll be fine. Nope, she has collapsed. Uh, Here comes the macro gallon blasters. See what you can do. Shots. We're not going to aim them. We're just going to fire and see where they land. It's five hit. All right, five hits. And what's the strength? Seven. My shields are down. So, so roll location. The Leg. legs. Not idea. They're already damaged though. Looking for sixes, and I can reroll the ones because they are ordnance. That's right. So we got one. Just one. All right, so direct hit, which advances this again. All right, does the game end on a nine or ten? Go ahead and roll. Nine or ten, the game ends. Nope, keeps going. Five, the initiative. Let's see who's going first. Six. Six, probably not me then. <laughs> and no, it's not. First, your uh, Anax Tragems. Grape the knights off with your Apocalypse Launcher. Looking Five for sixes. Dice. On sixes, yeah, because they're a lot of fire. No. Actually, I'm going to shoot your knights with my Ordnance Battery here on fours, because you're in the open. I don't think you're in the 12. And 12. So two hits. Uh, and then you will not be able to strike strength 10. And then I get to reroll ones for the damage here. Plus 10. Reroll ones, it's a 13. And a 14 against knights will be two devastating hits. So two points of damage. So the first one, if it can't do the whole two, you go the rest and remove a guy. And the second one just removes a guy. Let's go down from the ordinance. Uh, and it's now orders. You want to shoot any orders? Yeah, not really. Okay. I need a charge with the knights, see yep. if they can fight. Little, little golden head's going to try and charge. Four plus. Oh, he, yeah, he knows it. what's up. Uh oh. Uh, Alright, so you hit the, I think you hit the melee automatically. You once in the head with your melee weapon, you get plus one. So it's on a two plus? It's already one plus. plus. Alright, there you go, one plus. Hey! Okay. And then he's fishing for a five still? Yep, it's plus one. Strength eight effect. Hit in the head. No. Oh. Moved uh, three inches, you'd be able to actually get some extras there. Uh, because you're a knight, actually, I think you can. Because you don't have to move in your front arc, because you don't have an arc. So you can just move him in front of me if you want. Okay. There's and a couple get an extra attack. She won't happen until the movement phase. Yeah, okay. That so makes the sense. This roll doesn't do anything. Yeah, yeah. We just wait. Yeah, we just wait. We'll do that again. So yeah, sorry. This doesn't happen immediately during the strategy phase. Like some strategies do. This one happens in the movement phase. Yeah. Uh, so it's my turn to try and do a strategy. Do I want to do the same thing? I honestly might ready. I honestly might as well. Yeah. I'll try and charge two. Do I do it? I no. don't. Yeah, no more. I can't first fire now, which would let me fire twice in the shooting phase. So, uh, let's do some damage control. Or sorry, movement actually. And you get to choose who goes first. You can go first. All right. Walk four. Just move towards you. Charge. So he's going to move six inches, staying in the front. Yep. And do his little smash attack. Do it. So you get a free melee attack, basically. And, and you get, get plus two, two dice because of your charge. Yep. Nice. Total on twos. Go for the head. Take him down. Yep. Uh, Aim for the head. That's a reactor die. Nice. <laughs> and then. On sixes, you do damage. Fives. Uh, plus one. Fives, that's right. One. Yeah. All right, so you do direct hit, which pushes me into the plus two to my damage for my head range. We're on horribly wrong. All right, uh, so my movement then, I think we just. Easier though, I think guys. we just stay where we are. You might move away though. Now we're just going to pin you. We have to. Yeah, we have to. We're just going to go like this, like this, and like this, just to maximize three inches. Yeah, you know what? We'll, we'll keep it so you can move towards me, but not towards cover. How about that? <laughs> your your movement for uh, fire wasps. What does he want to do? Yep. Okay. Guns. Just just guns a clock. All right. Repair times. Repair time. That's right. Let's roll for our server clades and see what we get. So for you, oh, nothing. Oh, nothing. All right. For me, 
I need a six to bring my void shields back online. Silver clades, nothing. Don't even get my shields back. Vent a little bit. I can vent some plasma, yeah. I'm gonna fix your plasma blast gun, but it's still down. Ooh, yes. dangerous. All right, so that was the repair phase. Combat phase, you get to pick the first person to fight. All right, here he comes. Mr. Cannon's gonna do D3 attacks against my knights. Three. One, three, sorry, yeah, and strength. Five. Five, roll for it. Oh, I can try and shrug them first, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, so just see how many we get to discard. I get three on at strength five, so fours. Drop two one, so two dice. Right. Uh, and you get a five, ten. A ten and nine. Ten and nine, so the ten. And then I will both do direct hits. I lose two structure points. Everything else going into Canis Verdict. So here comes the uh, the murder Vulcan Mega Bolters. Yeah. How many shields? Uh, can you they do damage? Also, their strength four. Okay. Um, which makes them six against your head. Yep. Which is not enough. But your arms are only eleven, which is still not enough. Right. Oh. Okay. So they'd only really well, be getting shields. We're gonna shields. start with the macro Gatling blaster, and maybe that'll hurt something. Okay. <laughs> Target attack. Try to shoot my head? No, no. Okay. We're, uh, am I? I can't pre-measure. No, you can't pre-measure. Hmm. Yeah, we'll, you know what? We'll go for it. We'll it's minus two to hit, head. but you might as well try. Uh, I am with an eight, though, for plus one. Nice. And it's only minus one, then. Threes goes to four. Four, so you got it, yep. Six Four's shots on fours. Aiming for the head. Two? Two. But it's three? No, it's the bolters. No, no, these are just the normal ones. So strength right. seven goes to nine. Yep. And then I will... Fives? Three. That'll do it. I go to critical. Blam! Yep. As soon as I hit critical, you're plus three to the damage roll, and I am now getting MIU feedback. Man checks are currently at minus two, because the MIU feedback to my head. This is my face. You might as well try. Uh, so you're minus three, two. Six, seven. Ten? Twelve? Eight, nine, ten. Oh, you got a scatter in there. Yep. And it's 12 shots. I am in plus one range because yep. I'm within 10, so Minus I'm looking for four. Fours overall. Yeah. Yeah. Sixes are still worth two. Uh, so we got three so far. And two, two more two shots. Yeah, so these for are five? Two more on top of that. So six hits. There'll be strength seven now against your head, so yep. I'm rolling for sixes again. Rolling for sixes. Try to use some damage to the head. And we do. One. All right, so that pushes me to MIU feedback and my moderati are wounded. I'm minus one to hit you now. This one ballistic as well because one of my moderati is damaged. All right, we're going to melee stab your damaged arm. Don't do it. I'm doing it. All right, so I have three melee stabs on twos. No, you've done it as well. You have the, you have the wrong dice. No, there. I have the reaction die. Here we go. Twos. These dice are confusing. They all hit. Uh, and they all hit. And then it's armor. What am I plus at right now? Nothing. All right, 11 to 14s. I get uh, plus four to this. Plus seven. All right, so I get a four, 11, which is... Detonation. And then a 13, so I don't get the Still 14. Detonation. Just a detonation. So it's gone, so the card disappears. And my body takes a strength 7. Body takes a strength 7 hit. So strength 7 against your body, which then I can hit 6, don't I? I do! So I do a direct hit, which just pushes it down one, and your plaza blast gun's destroyed. Melty gun you, I guess in the body. In the melty gun, that's right, I have to roll for it. Where do I hit you with the melty guns? In the legs. Plus one right now for the melty guns yet? Not yet. Not yet, okay. One so more. it's 8, need 5s. One. Now you're, now you're plus one. And stab. Uh, he'll open with his melta. Makes sense. In the head? Of course, if I can. Special. Uh oh. The body, unless specified by the command terminal. So that's the body. Melta. Uh, that's a 12, 12. which is just enough to do a body point of damage. Yeah. And stab with the melee weapon. I yep. assume in the head. Two Go plus. Face. Two plus. Hits. It. And, and then, then it's plus ten. three. Strength 10. That's right. So three plus. No! Measurable head. <laughs> Back, apocalypse launchers. See what we can do. I can't hit you with my volcano cans this time because you're grouped together like that. So I need to roll five fours. So it's just three. Three saves, three plus. At least I can. So one, one shield goes down. And that looks like that. All right, so does the game continue on a uh, five plus? It, it ends. Nope, it ends. So that's game. So we have to see what our total VPs are. So you score, uh, I'm compromised on my Warlord because I have a crippled location basically, which is in the, the bad zone, which means you're gonna score half my scale. So scale goes to five, so 10 points for the damage you done to Cannes Verdicts. And then second is at the start of the battle, the player calculates the total scale of their units, which for you is 13. If you have at least half that starting total at the end of the battle, you score five VPs, and you do. 15 total. I'm gonna score zero for mine because I didn't get uh, off the board edge and didn't recover them, or 10 victory points if it's not been recovered, but it's within 12 inches of their battlefield edge. I didn't get back to within 12 of my battlefield edge. Destroyed any for a secondary objective. So the damage you done Canis Verdicts and the fact you delayed him being on the board will score at 15-0 uh, at the end of the game for Legio Ignatum.
All right, so there you go. End of the game. Uh, the Legio Ignatum taking the victory as I wasn't able to retrieve the down Titan crew with Canis Vertex. Um, I think this is a great example of two things. One, just how durable the Warlord Titans are um, and sort of how weapons can be optimized for roles. Obviously, the Volcano Cannon, very good at doing damage uh, when your shields are down against Titan targets, but not great at stripping shields because of its low rate of fire uh, versus the more sort of like, I guess, structurally flexible loadout that I had on the Firewall which allowed him to strip shields and also do damage. I had to strategically take out the Plasma Annihilator to keep myself um, basically safe once my Void Shields are collapsed. But even the, the Knights, as like easy to kill as they are at range, once I got up close, were able to harass my Titan and do a bunch of damage to it, crippling its head and even injuring the Moderati. So I, I really enjoyed that. Um, I'm really looking forward to this game with more Titans. I think the the nature of this game, if you just play with what's in, for instance, the Grand Master Box, where it's just Knights and Titans, you're very, very rarely gonna be able to complete the match play objectives, because I don't think Titans are gonna die very often. Um, you don't necessarily have enough shots, and you're just maneuvering two duelists, basically, to fight each other. The game will go a lot further than six turns. I think we need at least, six or seven turns for one of us to actually blow up. I was pretty close to damaged, but he'd lost um, one of his arms and the, the arm that basically could do all the damage to me and was almost down to zero knights. So once his knights were dead or if my knights broke off to fight his knights, he was in trouble um, as I slowly whittled away his shields and pushed my reactor and stuff. So I really enjoyed that. Um, I think it's a great, it's a great blend of some of the complexities of later editions of Adeptus, like Titanicus, like Titan Legions and stuff, uh, with the original sort of like the DNA, I guess, of the 1988 version of this game. Um, the scale is cool. I like the bigger models. They're a lot of fun to paint. Uh, and I'm looking forward, of course, to getting some stuff on the table, uh, like the Knights, the Reaver Titans, uh, and the Warhounds. I think it's it's written open-ended enough that you could certainly see things like Daemon Titans later on, um, or even Titans from other races if you're going to do a great crusade thing and you want to fight the Eldar Titans, the Orc Gargans, whatever. Uh, and with this scale in particular, and looking at it next to one of my Imperial Knights, if you click below and go to the on the paint table, you'll see it next to Mastodon. And I'm pretty confident you could do an Emperor class Titan in this game and have it be about the same size as the Imperial Knight. And and the game, the game could easily support a one really big Titan. You just pack the card in with him, I think, as an expansion, and you'd be ready to rock and roll. So. I'm sure there's lots more to come for this game. Um, the one, the one thing I will say is, it, <laughs> this game is probably going to be about as expensive to play as 40k if you played Imperial Knights. You're, you're, you're looking at if you want to have like a good mix of Titans to build the different maniples and stuff. You're, you're probably looking at an investment roughly the same size as a 40k army because these units aren't entirely cheap. Plus, you need the at least the basic rules edition to play. So. This is a game where I don't know how many people will play it because you're not going to get very many models for your total dollar value of like what you're spending on buying an army. But the flip side of that is you're going to get these beautiful miniatures you can lavish tons of detail on uh, and do a lot of time painting. And it's very satisfying to play them on the table because they stick around. They're not. It's not like when you're playing 40k necessarily and you could just lose a Knight Titan in one turn to like concentrated volleys of fire. In this game, I doubt you're going to lose a single Titan in a single turn, and your guys are going to kind of degrade and walk around. So. Because they're so durable, because they really are the stars of the game, I feel like that's a good balance probably between cost and how it's going to end up playing. So I'm excited to see the train. I'm going to paint up some knights. I, of course, didn't paint my old knights in uh, my personal 40k knight house's colors. I'll paint uh, House Metallum probably for when I get my actual Imperial Knight minis for uh, for this game. And I'm super stoked to, to get some paint on them and do a, a little tiny red fang and Mastodon and Baroness uh, and have them like on the table as well. So I really enjoyed that. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. We'll see you for more Adept Satanicus in the future as I grow my Titan Legion, as I grow my Warp Runners. Uh, and if you guys, of course, want to come into play and you're excited about it as well once it's out, you can drop me an email at grillminiaturegames at gmail.com or drop me a Facebook message at facebook.com slash out of the basement into the streets and we'll set up to play. So we'll see you for more of this. Until then, I'm Ash. And we're going to. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Deathbird Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, uh, big thanks to everyone past, future, who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.